Magic bus. And, uh, we're doing the park and ride for Byron Council and uh, the visitors of Byron to, uh, to give them a fun Byron Bay experience and uh, hopefully take some pressure off the traffic problems of Byron. Basically we're trying to encourage visitors and locals alike to pull into the Byron Sports and Cultural Centre, uh, park all day for five bucks. Uh, jump on a double-decker magic bus, get entertained. Half of the road in is a transit lane, so we'll go a bit faster than everyone else in Shirley Street. But the other half, we're going to be in traffic like everybody else. We have we have a bit like the, the Muller Music Festival, plenty of entertainment to, you know, to whittle the minutes by and you're out of the car and you can forget about it for the day. Um, just trying to get cars off, off the road and, and away from this circle work of trying to find a spot. Free ride on the magic bus! Starting at the sports complex and then we're running down to the surf club, uh, drop everyone off there and then uh, pick up at the surf club back to the sports complex. Park and ride! Every half an hour each way so we leave on the hour at the sports complex and on the half an hour from the uh, surf club. Australians are generally pretty wedded to our cars so you know I, I expect it might be a little bit underwhelming the response as opposed to overwhelming but we'll see I think every car that we get off the roads is a bonus um, and hopefully you know locals who beginning who are in the are used to dropping off their teenage kids to work can see this as an opportunity they can drop them off there not have to get in the queue we can't force people um, you know, I'm, I'm probably a little bit heavy-handed. If I had my way, I think I'd probably lock the lock the uh, the town like Europe and make everyone use these services. Um, and the next couple of years, you know, when we can use the rail line a bit more, we might have a capacity to really build on this. It's a trial. Added to that, we've also created an early bird all-day free parking at Butler Street. So as long as you're in by 10 o'clock, you can park all day for nothing. So one of the things that we've done is any of the areas currently which are unlimited, which are you know, going towards Bangalow Road or Lighthouse Road, or generally those roads that are a bit out of town, we're making two hours. Uh, we're doing that because we're trying to create incentives for visitors to say, hey, there's not so much parking in here, so park out at the BRSCC and forget about your car. For locals, we don't want to inconvenience locals, we don't want to inconvenience businesses, so we've been sending these to every household. For the last week or so, I've been, whenever I've got a spare moment, I've been walking around to the businesses to make sure that they've got their coupons, particularly for workers who, who live out of town, who live, say, in Lennox. They're out of the Shire. They're not going to get one of these in the mail. We don't want uh, workers to be getting fined, so I'm making sure that every um, business has got enough coupons. Uh, and basically, it just says, I'm a local, when it's all said and done. You put it on your dashboard, and if you've been parking on Bangalore Road all day, um, you can continue to do so. Last year, I think, you know, it was a bit of a perfect storm of circumstance. We had a lot of people in the Gold Coast who decided they wanted to come to Byron. We had no, nothing else regionally happening, nothing in Lennox or, or Lismore or Ballina. And then we had gorgeous weather. Um, so instead of 5,000 people, we had about 20,000. And ultimately, as they were allowed to drink during the day, uh, that um, habit continued into the night and we literally just had, you know, 10,000 people odd. 
20,000 just walking around drinking. It was generally, uh, you know, well, well mannered and, and uh, you know, the vibe was generally pretty positive. Unfortunately, there was just a little bit of disrespect as far as litter and garbage and just general um, lack of concern and care for our residents and our, and our, and our town. So what it, what it told us and what the residents then after that told us is that we want something respectful in our town. We want locals to feel that this is still our town and we can enjoy it rather than sort of having to hide in the houses and let visitors come and have you know have their peace with 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 our with our beautiful town. So what we're doing this year some obviously wanted adult entertainment. They didn't want to just bar humbug New Year's Eve and everyone go back and sip tea. They wanted to be able to be adults and use drink alcohol and do it respectfully and responsibly. And so part of that is that we asked Falls who were coming the week after New Year's Eve to bring it over New Year's Eve. And so we've now had over 3,000 local people are going to go to, New Year's, go to the Falls and have a wonderful, responsible time. Um, clearly also all the venues have got on uh, events and so again if you're over 18 and you want to drink with your friends for New Year's Eve there's places for you to go. On the other hand we've also listened to people who who wanted families to be able to come down into Johnson Street and into Byron without feeling uh, unsafe um, and so we've, we've created Soul Street which is all about bringing the soul of our community back onto our streets. Uh, we've got a fantastic creative program uh, that starts about two o'clock in the afternoon and goes to 9.30, 10 o'clock. Uh, you know, Samba Blisters, some great performances, Tommy Franklin, you know, and then a real focus on young kids. So yarn bombing of trees and chalk art and all sorts of craft, etc. Um, silent disco, and then finishing, I guess, with a bit more homage to Byron with a fire show. So, you know, rather than fireworks, which are pretty much done everywhere, you know, we bring that, that cultural essence of Byron to finish off. When you do have something at midnight, you're then virtually opening up an invitation for people to be around two, three o'clock in the morning. So really, if, if you're old enough to really want to celebrate and pop the champagne corks at 12, I guess the message is go somewhere uh, more responsible than, than the public streets. For those who sort of talked about not wanting to celebrate 2013 but wanting to reflect and, and uh, positively um, affirm 2014, we have a dawn ceremony and, and program which is going to be fantastic. Yoga, qigong, meditation, uh, sandcastle making and you know with a fantastic healthy local breakfast. We've got commitment by police to ensure that they will confiscate alcohol this year. This is not about creating some you know, lockdown uh, heavy police presence. If you bring your family and your friends and your kids into Johnson Street around Railway Park on New Year's Eve you'll just feel uh, you know, warm and welcome and, and joyous and that's what we're trying to do for New Year's Eve.